Hello and welcome to part 7 of the Complete Beginner's Guide to Blender 3. In this episode we're looking at creating our scene and adding some materials. Do remember to check out the playlist on this channel or my website for more great content. Ok so here's where we got up to last time and it's now time to set up our scene. So first of all we want to resize our characters so the monster looks more ominous and ginormous. We can either box select the whole thing or it's probably better to come across the monster collection over here, right click and select objects. Let's go to front view and resize. Now I could scale at the moment and make them big that way. That's absolutely fine and then you can move it into position. But if I press shift right click at the bottom here, change my transform pivot point to 3D cursor and now press scale, I can scale them up from the floor size. So it's a little bit easier to use that transform pivot point of the 3D cursor. So probably somewhere around this sort of size. So it's really huge. Just move them off to the sides so he's not overlapping with our man. Okay, I'll turn off the 3D cursor back to medium point and let's come around to probably top view to position them. So G to grab, across here, R to rotate, in the Z, 180 degrees. So the monster's around the other way and into position quite close, maybe somewhere around here. It's probably a little bit too close, so back a bit, G then Y. And I might also want to start adding a little bit more shape to the top half of the character to bend him over a bit more. If you select an object that you don't want, you can control box select to get rid of that. Let's come around to side view, a bit more rotation there, back a little bit, and maybe this needs to rotate a bit as well. That's looking better. Ah, now I missed the eyes, so they're in there. Let's just go to side view and tidy those up manually. That looks good. Okay, let's check our man's looking in the right way. That looks good as well. It could be a touch smaller maybe. Somewhere around there, I think. It's looking good. So take a moment to catch up with me and move your characters into position. Remember you can scale them using the 3D cursor as the pivot point. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, let's put a floor for them. So Shift A to add, mesh and then plane. Now I forgot to move my 3D cursor. I can remove any of this movement here by either clicking and dragging on all of them and pressing zero and that moves it back to the center or I'll undo that. You can press Alt G to remove any movement. So I'll scale my floor up probably somewhere around here. Scale in the Y, so we've got a kind of street, G then Y to move that across a little bit to there. That's good, let's create a curb coming up the side here. So shift right click, shift A to add, mesh and then cube. Scale that in the Y and scale in everything but the Y, so shift Y and we've got a little curb there. And you can go to town creating your pavement if you want, but I think it's just as easy to scale in the X and make it nice and wide like this and move it across in the X as well. So a simple pavement there. It's probably a little bit long, so scale in the Y and just edit your shape. So you've got a scene that you like. And now we need a lamppost. So I'll shift right click to move my 3D cursor. And in fact, it'd be good for you to have a challenge of making the lamppost on your own. So pause the video and have a go at that. So the way I did it was shift A to add and I did a sort of very blocky lamppost because my characters are quite blocky. So mesh, cube, scale it down, scale in the Z axis, move it up slightly, G then Z, somewhere like this. Now let's go to edit mode and start editing the shape. So face mode with three, select that face, E to extrude and pull it upwards in the Z axis there, scale it down, then E to extrude again. Let's go up relatively high, somewhere around there. Now this bit some people find quite tricky. Let's go to front view. Some people start rotating now, so they press R to rotate and it makes it really thin and look a little bit odd. A better technique, let's go to front view again and E to extrude upwards. We create that sort of loop cut around there. Then I can select this face and E to extrude outwards. And we've got a very simple lamppost there. We can edit this a bit more by Control R and doing a loop cut here. Drag it across the beginning here and click to set. Select these face loops. So into face mode and Alt left click along a face loop and scale in the Y to make that a bit wider. It does depend where you're from as to what your lampposts look like, but I think that will work for now. And we can edit the shape a bit. Maybe it's a little bit tall at the top. So we could use wireframe, but I'll use this opportunity to show you X-ray mode. If I click on that, it's a bit like wireframe, but also a bit like solid mode, somewhere in between X-ray mode. So I can go to side view, scale these down a bit. Just be aware I'm bending my lamppost there because it's taking the medium point. So it would be better to shift right click somewhere around here and use the 3D cursor and scale it down into that position. And I might move it upwards a little bit further, G then Z. Now I want to copy this lamppost over to here, but I know that the lamppost will always be exactly the same, unless you wanted a sort of bent lamppost that had been kicked over by this monster. But if it's going to be exactly the same as the previous one, instead of pressing Shift D, 
it's best to press Alt D. So Alt D and then Y. It does exactly the same thing by creating a duplicate, but it's an instance. So if I go to the object menu, you can see there's duplicate objects with Shift D and duplicate linked with Alt D. The great thing about this is if I go into edit mode now and let's say change the height, so G then Z, it actually affects the original, which you can see there as well as this one. So any edits I make to the shape are updated on any linked duplicate, as you can see there. So it's very handy and we only need to make edits to one. So pause the video and create a scene for your characters and with the lamp post, create a linked duplicate with Alt D and have a play around with that and see how it works. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so it's time for us to start shading our objects. Let's go across to the shading workspace for this and I'll come around to the side, somewhere around here and we can start adding new materials. Now this is entirely up to you how you want to do it, but I'll give you a quick reminder, starting with the lamp post, I'll press new, call this gray, and we can make it metallic, and we can make it gray, somewhere around there, and that's great. What we'll want to do later is add an emission object underneath the lamp post, but we'll leave that for just a moment. Just go around adding new materials to your character and monster. I think my monster is going to be mainly black. Now if you're sharing materials, we can select the rest of the monster. So I'll go up to the collections here, just bring that down a touch, hide the old man, right click on the monster and select objects. And I want to copy this black material onto the rest of the object. Make sure that's the active object. So shift click to change the active object. When I click on the torso, that's got the black material. So I can press control L and link materials. That's given them all that black material. Now I'm going to undo that because I accidentally put these objects into the monster collection. So I'll need to move those first. So select the lamp posts, select the floor as well. Move to new collection, street and press OK. So let's try that again. Right click the monster, select objects, make sure that's the active object, control L, link materials. There we go, that's a bit better. Although the eyes, they want to be an emission. So we create a new material for that, red emission, and we scroll down to where it says emission here, change the color to red, so bring up the brightness, cross to the red, and emission strength just here. Now it's not looking much like an emission at the moment, but remember if I come across to my render settings here, I can change the render engine to something like cycles and show what it would look like in render view. And it's actually giving off light. Or if we want to stick with material preview mode and EV, we can change back to EV here and use the bloom setting. And you can see it going all bright just there. We've also got the background sort of bloom there as well, but we'll change the background later on. So if you haven't already, catch up with me, texturing the lamppost and the monster. Also have a go at texturing the other objects by yourself. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully that's fairly straightforward now. I'll just quickly add some materials in. Now just a quick note, because I copied this object for the arms and the head, it's sharing the same material. And it's important to remember that any changes I make to this one will update on anything that has that blue material. So I need to go into these objects and give them a different material if I want them to have a different material that is. Certainly for the head, I'll need a new material. So create a new one and call it skin. Now for the torch, we want an emission texture coming from the front here. There's a couple of ways of doing this. Probably the easiest way is to create a new material slot. So this torch has slot one, which has the torch gray material, and that's covering everything. I can create a new slot. So under this drop down here, press the plus sign. So it's got a new slot here and we can create or add a material that we've already got. I'll add a new one though. So new material and call this torch light and create an emission texture that's kind of yellowy in color. Give it a nice lot of strength. Now we can't see anything happening because I need to assign this face here to slot two. So we go into edit mode and select that face. Make sure you're in face mode, of course. Go to our slots, choose slot two, which has our torch light material. Select that and press assign. And that assigns that material to that face. So different faces can have different materials by using material slots. So torch gray in slot one, and that's the rest of our object. And I can actually select those faces. You can see them selected there, or I can deselect them there. Torch light, I can deselect that or select that, and it will show you the faces that are assigned to those slots. The other way to do it is to select the face and separate it. So P to separate by selection this time, because it's not a loose part, it's attached. But it's probably a bit easier to use material slots. 
Okay, so make sure you've got your torch light with an emission texture, and we're getting very close to finishing our scene. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.